Okay, so the topic is hazard from earthquakes and tsunamis in the Caribbean. And the, the, the place of, of study is Anegata, uh, way out there, uh, kind of out towards the Puerto Rico Trench, uh, a low flat place with uh, no part of it, and, uh, believed to be more than eight meters above sea level. Uh, the, the main story, as far as we know about uh, hazard out there, is, is that uh, waters from the Atlantic side, the north side, have uh, come across low parts of the island and have splashed onto somewhat the higher parts of the island and have left traces of, of doing that, several different kinds of traces. Um, this is a story that's been uh, unfolding in a way, or, or learning about it is something we've been doing uh, since 2008. This happens to be my fourth time to Anegata to work on this. And each time is, a, is a, a, an opportunity for, for amazing discovery uh, and, and surprises. What prompted this year's trip was, uh, was learning that we uh, had evidence out there for more than one time of, we'll call it overwash. Not the whole island being washed over, but the low places. But I'll use the term overwash because sometimes we're not sure whether we're dealing with, with a storm or with a tsunami. Um, and, and what we learned a, a few years back was that the most recent time of overwash uh, happened between the year 1650 and 1800. Uh, we, didn't, we couldn't pin it down any, any tighter than that. But the only big Caribbean tsunami in that time is the one that came from Lisbon, Portugal in 1755. So we thought tentatively we were dealing with the Lisbon tsunami. There were a couple of pieces of the puzzle out there that didn't quite fit that story though. There was evidence for, for earlier overwash. And, and uh, sometimes, you know, when, when, when you got an idea and there's something else that doesn't fit with it, you tend to just push that idea aside, that evidence aside, and you don't deal with it so much. And you know, even just, just coming over here today on the ferry, I was thinking, oh, I should have remembered, when I saw that piece of evidence that didn't fit my story, I should have paid more attention to it. But anyways, what finally tipped us off was uh, some brain corals. And um, maybe what I should do is make a sketch of of what I think uh, happened there in Lisbon time, and then we'll go from there. So, so um, Anagata, what's the shape of Anagata? Some, something like that, right? Yeah, that's not a bad, that's not a bad uh, approximation. And what's this distance on Anagata? It's uh, 15, 20 kilometers, something like that? Okay, and, and um, there's a, Essentially, there's a, there's a high part here, and then there are some low places here, and a lot of low places here. And it was these low places that we knew that got washed over. There's a reef that sits up here, and so if we were to draw, draw a line like that, oh, I should add that there are some sand ridges that that dot the edge here and some lower sand ridges down here. So this this will be, um, we'll make a, a vertical slice now through this to get an idea. So this will be north and this will be south. And let's see, let's give ourselves ocean and coral reef and there's a little little flat area and then the shoreline and the sand ridge there and then we go into in this part we go into salt ponds and then we come out the other side and there's a little sand ridge here and then you're off into the whoops the down here now okay so this is north that's south. Okay, now out here, out here, um, back before the big coral die-off, people did some surveys and they found a, 
a kind of coral that everybody around here knows. It's new to me. And people call them brain corals, I guess, because the pattern of, yeah. looks a little like you. I don't want to see what my brain looks like, but anyways, those, those corals are round and they, most of them are sitting out here. And there are some that were here also when they were surveyed in the 1970s. It's a really wonderful, I don't know if you've seen it, it's a really wonderful report by um, some uh, worldwide authorities on corals. And they came here and they, they made off of Jack's Bay and down at the East End and up here and some patch reefs out here. And they've made very systematic surveys of what kinds of corals were there. So it's a really good guide. Well, anyways, what we found um, in 2009 out here at Red Pond and I, I, is a great big brain coral head just sitting out in the middle of the salt pond, flats, essentially. You know, it doesn't live there. And we dug down underneath it and we found that it, the bottom was, was, was embedded about a half meter down. And we went, elite, let's see, we went a meter and a half or, or a bit more, and we still weren't hitting any rock. So that thing was just sitting on sand out there. So it, it didn't live there. It got rolled in. And over here, Bumberwell, we found one like that too. And then, and then last year, uh, came up with another one down there. And we thought, okay, these got rolled in by the Lisbon tsunami. And what we're going to do is uh, there are ways of dating coral using uranium from the seawater. And the uranium, um, the uranium dates, you can nail the time of, of, of the, uh, uh, when the, that part of the coral was grown. You can nail it to within a year or two. It's a really wonderful dating method uh, using uranium. So we thought, okay, we'll, we'll collect these corals, these three guys and we'll get a, um, we'll, 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 we'll test the Lisbon hypothesis, right? Here it is! In case of an earthquake, and the place that's shaking, shaking. Drop, cover, and hold on. Drop, cover, and hold on. In case of an earthquake, there's a few tips that can keep you from harm In case of an earthquake You gotta stay calm Move away from doors, windows And things that can fall Try not to use steps or elevators at all Drop, protect your head on your face Don't go running all over the place Cover, under a bed or a table Against a wall that's firm and stable Hold on, you must hold on Don't panic, stay calm Don't move until the shaking stops Here it is, drop And hold on in case of an earthquake. Drop, cover, and hold on. Learn how to protect yourself during an earthquake. Log on to weready.org. That's W E R E A D Y dot O R G for more information. How many beats are there in a whole no? Four. 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 Somebody clap them off me, please. I repeat, this is not a drill. I say run, 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 run into higher ground. Run, run, you know that you have to run. Run, 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 run. You got to make this in order to be safe. You got to find out high place. I say run, 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 run. run into higher ground. Faster, faster, you know that you have to run. Run, run, run. You got to make this. And um, so first we said, okay, let's get a ballpark age. So 
uh, radio, radioactive carbon gives you that kind of thing, and you get uncertainty of plus or minus 50 years, but that's good enough to tell you whether you're in the 1700s, you know. So, so we, we, we submitted three, three samples, and they all came back medieval, like from the 1300s to the 1400s. They're pre-Columbus, for sure. All three of them. And they all gave the same age within the uncertainties of the radiocarbon. And they're older, all older than Lisbon. And so he said, oh, we really do have an earlier time of overwash before this one in 1650. The one from 1650 forward is, it's nailed as, as being younger than 1650. There's no way to get around that. So, so this is just simply an earlier event. And it makes sense, right? I mean, uh, uh, usually things come along in, in quantities of more than one. Uh, and so, so we said, okay, we gotta figure out, you know, what of this evidence that we thought was Lisbon is inherited from an earlier time? And, and so, um, <clears throat> anyways, that, the brain correlate at, uh, at Red Pond is in a setting like this, essentially. <laughs> and that's what this one, this one's actually in a pond. Um, so, this year, what do we do? All right, we, one of the places we, we went to that got back to this coral story is up here at a place called Soldier's Wash. Soldier's Wash is, uh, the settlement is down, it's probably about due south of the settlement. I'll put TS for the settlement. And, and um, up here at Soldier's Wash, uh, it's, a, it's a real nice, real nice place to work. They got, um, there's uh, higher ground here with uh, the, uh, the old rocks of the, this stuff turns out to be um, 120,000 years old. We dated it last year. The, the, uh, from a quarry up there, we dated some little uh, finger uh, corals that are in this old stuff that makes up the hard ground, at, at not the sandy ground at Onagana. So that, anyways, that's, what, that's what's there. And then you go down to the beach and the waves like this, and there are all sorts of cobble-sized corals plastered against here by the storms. And this is your storm record. And, and back here, you've all seen these. This is the first time for me. The, um, there are lots of those uh, lots of those Anagata walls. You've seen those guys, right? So we're walking back here, and you can see all the Anagata walls on the air photos, and I'm, I'm just trying to figure out where I am looking at these Anagata walls. And what do you know that there's a big brain coral head sitting here? And I look, so you start looking in the walls, and you see those people were building walls partly with, with pieces of brain coral that had been rolled in across this. And, and the, the, the distance of of rolling in is, is between, it's about 200 to 400 meters. These things, and so the, this is the record of storm, and this is the record of something else. And, and so, so, we, so we collected a bunch of these guys. It, it, and and that, that, that was astonishing. But then yesterday, I mean, this stuff just, it just keeps coming at you. So yesterday, uh, most of the people in the group, I didn't go, I was preparing my talk for here. But most of them, they, rent, they went way back down here. And they found dozens of these things, dozens of them. Sitting, um, they, they, they got washed onto this part of the island. So there's, some, there's something about, we think with the brain coral, there are, other, there are other kinds of coral that are involved in this. Not just a brain coral, there's um, uh, well, a few other kinds, but maybe it's that the, the, the things are like bowling balls or something, they just, they just kind of roll really well. Um, 
and they're not as dense as regular rock, right? I mean, it's not the same as, as picking up a granite boulder over here at, uh, on these other islands. So, so anyways, this evidence showed up very nicely. We also, um, what else did we do? One of the places we hadn't looked, one of the ponds we hadn't worked on was, um, was a Flamingo Pond. And we thought, okay, we got to find out if Lisbon has written that it's hit, or whatever that is, between, after, between 1650 and 1800, whether Lisbon is, is recorded over here. So we went, we went in there, and, um, and it's just, it's very beautifully displayed. It's very, very nice. Um, and then we wanted to know about this story, okay, if there's a medieval event, and then there's a Lisbon event, then what, what came into Flamingo Pond? Did both of them come into Flamingo? So, so we worked our way up over here into an area where what's probably Lisbon had cut some small scours through some sand ridges way up near the north end. And then just a little bit of the water had gotten down towards, towards uh, uh, Flamingo Pond, and you can see the, see the evidence for that. Uh, and, and then there, but then there's, a, there's a, a path that an earlier overflow, an earlier overwash took that just chopped out a lot of the sand ridges that are up here. So it looked like there also you could see evidence for more than one time of overwash. So what we're trying to do is, is um, see how uh, a story plays out in different settings. It's the same story, but it's written slightly different depending on, on where you are. And, and so you want to find out if, if the stories are consistent from one place to another. So we, we, we try to work with stories with the, with the coral. We try to work with stories with the sand that was laid out. And we try to look also at, the, at places where the sand was eroded. And so those three lines of evidence the, uh, uh, the erosion of the, 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 you see so clearly in a map of Anagata, right, up, up north of Red Pond and Bumberwell, there are all those funny finger-shaped ponds that mark paths of, of overflow. So that's that one line of evidence, and then the second line of evidence, the sand that was moved from them, spread out as a sheet mixed with shell, and the third line of evidence, these corals. So anyways, that's, that's, that's pretty much where we stand with this. The good thing is, let's see, this year's crew, um, this year's crew, we had, uh, uh, we had one day's help from a grade school student who, in Anagata, and uh, he's just intrepid. She, uh, uh, so she, she helped us one day at, at Flamingo Pond. Um, there's, there are two people from, Paris, France, who usually work in, the, in, in Martinique and Guadeloupe, and they needed experience with this kind of geology. They haven't done this kind of thing before, and they need to know to, what to look for. And Anagata is a teacher, and so they, they went to school here. And, and I, ever, I still feel I'm a student here also, just that I've been, to, been at this school before, but but I don't, I have, you know, there's a lot, it's still teaching me. And then, um, let's see, there's a graduate student from University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez, who's a classmate of uh, Gary Mars. Uh, and and she, it's really great. She and, and a person who worked here in 2008, Marticia Tuttle, they got a grant to do this kind of work over in the U.S. Virgin Islands. So they're also, what they learn there is going to help to understand what's going on here, and what they learn here is going to help them there. And then, then, we, brought, then we got a guy who makes uh, computer models of storms and tsunamis. He's from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in Seattle, Washington. Uh, Yong Wei is his name. Very bright guy. His, he did his PhD in Hawaii on typhoons. Um, so being in Hurricane Alley is no problem for him, but uh, these days he makes his living as a uh, modeler, a computer modeler of tsunamis. 
So he can do both things. And so a place like Anagata that can get hit by hurricane and can get hit by tsunami, he can deal with both of them. So anyways, um, this, this time around, we were loaned uh, some very nice uh, surveying equipment that, that uses a monumented GP, continuous GPS station over at, at uh, what's, where's Charlotte Amelie? Is it St. Thomas? So apparently there, I've never seen it. They have some very secure uh, platform that holds a GPS antenna. And this is a very high quality GPS antenna and it's turned on all the time. And every second it figures out where it is on the, on the surface of the globe with using satellites of all kinds. <clears throat> so, um, Yong uh, Wei, the guy from Seattle, he's been carrying around a GPS antenna that also solves its position every second. And all the, all the noise that happens between the satellites and Charlotte Amelie is about the same as the noise that happens between those satellites and Anagata. So then what they do, they do is they make a difference with, with Charlotte Amelie and he, he's measuring the elevation of the ground surface with uncertainty, like a centimeter or two, okay? Vertical, and probably the horizontal uncertainties are smaller. So he's, he's not making a complete topographic map of, the, of, of Anegata because you, you know it would be tough to, to carry this uh, uh, or recording equipment here uh, through the bushes out there, and there, there are lots of spines. Um, but uh, wherever he can, uh, he's, he's making very, very good surveys. And so this will help him when he makes his computer model because how far the water goes in depends in part on how high the ground is and this kind of stuff. So, so anyways, that, that's, a, that's, that's a new piece of equipment that we have with us this year. And it's meant to be in support of the, of the computer modeling. But the main the main new story is, is, is with, these, uh, uh, with these many, many boulders. So, so now the, oh, and this place, this, this place is really great. Soldier, Soldier Wash, Soldier Point. Because um, if, you, if you roll the clock back thousands of years here, uh, you know, during, during the, the last ice age, about 15, thousand years ago uh, a lot of water was tied up in the in the glaciers that covered Canada so the level of the ocean was lower because a lot of the water was up there and then that water melts and the and the sea comes up and in, in the Caribbean it's it's pretty common to find that that sea levels approach their present position by about 5,000 years ago so it means that a place like this at Soldier Wash that sea levels have, have been here in a position to throw, uh, for a tsunami to come in and throw brain coral heads across, roll them across like bowling balls across, across down towards the, what's now the stone wall area, uh, <laughs> you know, they, for thousands of years. So it's possible that, the, that these corals will help to give a an even longer history going back even before medieval time okay so we we hope that the corals will will help to extend that record it's i don't i don't know i don't know of um of any any big tsunami source that is not repetitive you know especially the 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 faults where, as we have here, the, the North America plate diving under the Caribbean plate, a so-called subduction zone. I mean, that the motion of the plates towards one another, as far as can be told, is, 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 is a fairly steady thing that's been going on for millions of years. So it's not going to stop just because you and I are here. And, and, uh, and so this provides a way to, to kind of reload the gun every time. And, and uh, it, it's hard to avoid having repeated earthquakes and tsunamis in that way. But as for the source, 
you know, what were the sources that, that, ruled, that did these things? And was, if we are dealing with Lisbon, did it, does it have a different signature in terms of what it moved? We're not sure that any of the corals that we've seen were moved by Lisbon. It may have been this medieval thing that moved them all or earlier ones. And there may be something different about the tsunami, that, that a tsunami from a nearby source might have uh, a different kind of, of, of wave train and be able to move, to dislodge. First, it's got to go into the reef and, and break these things off. And as far, the Lisbon tsunami might be one of these that comes in like a rapidly rising and falling tide. And whereas if you have a tsunami generated along the Puerto Rico Trench, you have a better chance of getting waves that would be more damaging to the reef and could dislodge these, these, these coral boulders and roll them in. Anyways, those are open questions. Uh, let's see, so to sum up, um, at Anegata, Anegata, this, this amazing recorder of natural disasters. Uh, they, in the form of, of, uh, of evidence for overwash, uh, evidence in the form of, uh, of, of scours of places where, where water poured across the landscape and cut into sand and, and scooped out the sand or, or took off the tops of ridges, just cut off their heads, kind of, and, and, uh, and then spread the sand out in sheets and then also on the reefs dislodged uh, corals and the brain corals because of their shape probably then they roll way inland. So all, all these things are, are, are beautifully displayed out here and, and uh, one's still in the very early stages of figuring out the history that these things tell. Uh, but it's, it's a richer history than, than we knew of a year ago. Uh, let's see, the coral, remember that the the, the, the surprising ages of the medieval ages of the coral, that was, that was a case of last year we were out here looking at mostly at the effects of Earl. And we went back to these coral boulders and, and the guy with us who's most experienced with corals, Bob Halley, said, you know, we should date these. So, so he got out a chisel and just chipped off a little piece. And, and, uh, and then we got these these medieval ages out of them. So at, at that point, we were really surprised, you know, and we thought, oh, any opportunity we have, we've got to go back and, and sort this out because we really do have evidence for more than one time. We really don't know that it's Lisbon. That's what we were ho that's what we thought we'd get with by dating those corals. And um, so now what we've done is we've, uh, we've probably collected little samples from Maybe, maybe two dozen coral heads. And so we'll see whether any of them come back Lisbon age or whether they're all older. You know, that's a possibility. That I, a fly in that ointment is that you can have dead corals sitting out on a reef. And they could have been dead for a long time. And then some come along, pick them up, and throw them in here. So you date the coral. You're not dating the event. You're dating the death of the coral out here. But you can, you can see some of that stuff. We collect, we, we saw one of these corals out at, uh, at uh, Soldier Wash, a couple hundred meters inland, that, that uh, had a little calcareous worm living on an eroded upper surface. And it also had, you know those, the, 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 the sand grains are, are made pink yeah. by that little encrusting thing. Well, the, the surface is, was encrusted with pink. So, and it was an eroded surface. Um, so, so the coral had died and parts of it had been eaten away and these other organisms were living on it, okay? So that was an example of an, of an older coral that we'll have to be careful as we, uh, that'll always be a, a problem with figuring this story out. But um, that, these, that these three corals gave the same age uh, that, that's, that, that's ground for optimism. And also there's a, there's a smoothness to the exterior surface of some of these corals that's, that's, that's very beautiful. So these are, for where I'm from, we don't have corals. I'm, I'm uh, way up in the, 
in the upper left-hand corner of the map of the United States. And so, and, 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 but we have these great big uh, uh, evergreen trees. And, and some of them you know, have diameters like, like that, right? And, and they're hundreds and hundreds of years old. So we're told that with the brain corals, a typical growth rate is a centimeter a year. So if you've got a, if you've got a, a brain coral that's, um, uh, well, I think maybe even less than that, but uh, the estimate that, that Bob Holly gave me, our, our coral person gave me last night was that, that some of those corals were probably 200 years old. This brings us to the end of another Focus show, and I want you to remember to tune into Focus every second and fourth Wednesday on CBN at 9 p.m., every second and fourth Thursday on JTV at 6 p.m., and every second and fourth Saturday on Channel 52 at 7 p.m. Focus can also be viewed on www.bviddm.com.